Hey, what's up guys? Nick here. Today, of course, we're talking about Halo Infinite. If you didn't know, over the last couple of days, we've got basically everything we've been waiting for. We finally have seen Halo Infinite gameplay. It feels surreal to actually say that because it feels like we've been waiting forever for this to happen. So if I look a little bit tired under my eyes, I apologize, but I've basically been staring at my monitor for the past 48 hours straight, just staring at Halo Infinite. And you know what? I'm not complaining. But over the past 48 hours, the Halo community has been on quite the journey. And now that I've had a moment to kind of process everything, I wanted to make this video kind of summarizing absolutely everything we saw and my thoughts on it. And of course, if you're brand new, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I try and post awesome, very informative, and just fun Halo Infinite videos here. So if you want that, this is the place for it. But without further ado, let's get into things. So these were my rough predictions for E3 from a couple of weeks ago, if you watched that video. So from these possible predictions, we we actually got more than I expected and some things I didn't expect. So far we've seen a campaign showcase, Joe Staten presenting, multiplayer showcase and BTB 2.0. We also got a Vi doc which was unexpected and honestly my favorite bit of Halo Infinite news so far. It's been truly rejuvenating to finally hear the devs talk about Halo Infinite in depth with gameplay to support it. It's been amazing. What we sadly didn't get was any live action content. If you didn't know, there's been a few leaks regarding the Halo TV show. And I thought, you know, around the E3 time, it makes sense. Maybe the trailer is going to be there at the show. But to my surprise, it wasn't. I truly expected after those leaks came out to see the trailer. But we still are left in the dark. We still don't know what this TV show truly looks like. But from the leak screenshots, which I can't show, by the way, it looks pretty cool. We also didn't get anything on Forge, which was not really that surprising. But the main thing we didn't see was any commitment to any dates at all. No flights, no release date, though we did get some reassurance on flights in the Halo blog post that was released alongside the initial trailer. I'd be lying if I said no release date didn't bum me out just a little, but I don't see a 2022 delay happening. I think they're just keeping their options open for a wide release window later this year. But let's do a little breakdown on everything we've seen so far. We've got a total of three amazing Halo Infinite videos that we've been shown over the last couple of days. A campaign demo, a multiplayer reveal, and a Vidoc style multiplayer overview. Out of these pieces of content, we saw amazing graphical leaps and fixes since last year's showcase. If you didn't know, I did make a comparison, so make sure you check that out after this video. We saw Cortuna. We saw a total of five multiplayer maps. We'll have some lore on them soon as well, so I'll make a video on that. We saw a training mode that included bots. We saw all of these beautiful Spartans. We also saw an in-depth look at customization in the game, and it looks incredible. We saw a total of 11 vehicles, a Mongoose, a Gun Goose, a Warthog, a Rocket Hog, Razorback Hog, which you can store weapons on, Banished Banshee, Banished Wraith, Banished Ghost, Banished Chopper, Scorpion Tank, Wasp, and a Pelican. If you ask me, that sounds like an amazing list of vehicles, and I cannot wait to try each and every one of them. We saw a total of six equipment pickups, the grapple hook, the deflector thing, camo, a super jump thing, a shield wall, and of course, overshield. The official names for those things might be out there. If I missed them, then I just missed them, but you get the idea. We saw a total of 14 weapons, the sidekick with a beautiful redesign, AR, BR, Bulldog, Commando, Sniper Rifle, Spanker, Skewer, Needler, Pulse Carbine, Ricochet Weapon, which I'm not too sure of the name, Gravity Hammer, Energy Sword, and Plasma Pistol. We saw AI Companions. We saw six game modes, Oddball, CTF, Slayer, BTB, which is 12v12, FFA, King of the Hill, or Zone Control. We saw Dynamic Vehicle Destruction. We got an explanation on how the Season Pass will work, and it seems about as friendly and as non-intrusive as you can possibly get. Basically, if you buy the Season Pass, even if you don't have time to complete it that season, that's perfectly fine. You're able to go back and complete that Season Pass whenever you want. And the best part is, even if you missed buying a previous season, you can go back and buy that whenever you want, and you can choose where your progression goes. So say it's currently on Season 5, but there's a bit of armor back in Season 3 that you really wanted. You can buy the Season 3 pass and just focus on that pass to get that bit of armor and then maybe regain your focus back on Season 5. This is such a positive decision for players. It means that FOMO isn't really going to be in this game. Of course, there's probably going to be stuff in the game that you have to unlock in a certain amount of time just because that's always fun. But when it comes to seasonal stuff, Infinite isn't trying to force itself to be your main game. It's allowing you to be like, you know what? Maybe I do have time to check out this new RPG or Forza or whatever. 
You're not going to miss out on the seasonal content just because you want to enjoy another game for a couple weeks. Okay, that's actually a lot whenever you lay it all out. What do I actually think? I'm currently in the camp of <laughs> hyped out of my mind, which I'm sure none of you are surprised by. I was feeling pretty good after the gameplay reveal, and then the Vidoc came out of nowhere and knocked it out of the park. I think the Vidoc was probably the best thing they could have done. It has got such an amazing reception, and honestly, it really just gave us a whole nother look at the game that everyone truly did need. Having an in-depth look straight from the devs is something I've always loved ever since Bungie started making their Vidoc series. I'm also really happy they seem to have dropped the red versus blue system. Of course, this is a legacy thing that's always been in the games, but honestly, I would much rather be able to show off my Spartan in-game and see everyone else's Spartans exactly how they like it without being painted red or blue and all of our, you know, cool Spartans being covered up by this color. The new friend or foe system that is basically a line around Spartans to show if they're a friendly or a foe is very smart. I think it's going to work very well and I'm pretty sure I read that you're going to be able to change the colors to whatever you want. So if I always want to be on Team Orange fighting Team Purple or Pink, I can do that by switching an option. I really, really like all the new sandbox we've seen, especially the deflector pickup, and of course, the ricochet weapon. And don't even get me started on that samurai armor. It is literally a huge contender for ODST, and all of you know just how much I love ODST. Overall, I'm totally fine with the game having a season pass. Obviously, people out there are gonna have a bit of a weird thought, you know, their Halo game having a microtransaction season pass system, you know, that was never in Halo before, so I hate it. I get that, but in the end of the day, I would much rather Halo be as accessible as it possibly can and free to play is the best way to do that. And the best thing is, not only is the multiplayer free at launch, but we also get the first season completely free. So there's nothing to complain about. We literally get all of this stuff for free at launch. It's crazy. And of course, the maps look incredible. That BTB one we saw looks insane with the Forerunner towers and just all the action going on. But overall, they all look like a lot of fun and I cannot wait to jump in and try all of them. Overall, I'm just left wanting more at this stage. I'm beyond hopeful for Halo Infinite. I actually got a little bit emotional whenever the Vidoc ended, simply because I've waited so many years to see this game come into fruition. You know, we got the first announcement back in 2018, and to see the game there, it's, you know, an actual thing that exists, and it looks great, it looks fun, and it looks beautiful. I just kind of felt relieved as a Halo fan, as a Halo content creator, it was just very overwhelming for me. I could talk for years about what we've seen, but to be honest with you, I just want to give you my first initial thoughts on this game this is our first proper look at infinite so i just wanted to get out there you know what do i love what is something about this game that is immediately very very awesome to me and there is a lot to talk about in that regard and to be honest with you there isn't actually that much that i saw that i wasn't that impressed with or wasn't happy with i've seen a few bits and bobs on twitter and all that for example but realistically Nothing is really jumping out at me as being that bad to the point where I'm unhappy about it. But of course, that could very much change whenever I finally get my hands on the game, whenever flights start happening. So if you haven't signed up for the Halo Insider, make sure you do, because they did say flights are happening later this summer, so make sure you get on that. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for my first initial impressions of Halo Infinite. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Are you hyped out of your mind for this game? Are you still a little bit wary? Let me know. I would love to get all of your feedback down in the comments. As always, if you did enjoy, make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you're brand new. I'll have plenty more Infinite content out in the next coming weeks. Hopefully we get these flights ASAP so I can actually start posting some gameplays of this game. It's going to be very exciting. So yeah, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye!